us and uh, again welcome and good evening and so now i hand over the dust to dr ak chaturvedi the owner of dr chaturvedi cancer hospital and the admin of oncology integrated group and the uh, past president of the upari and he has been a member of the advisory council and now also he is so dr ak chaturvedi will uh, chair and also conduct the session over to you thank you dr deepti thank you dr deepti very good evening dear colleagues this forum has been meant for the discussion and to bring all the oncologists ready beat radiation surgical or medical oncologists on one platform to discuss uh, about the management of cancer today in this sequence we have decided to select colorectal carcinoma and uh, it is a commoner cancer worldwide with low reported incidence in india it is third leading cause of cancer deaths in us overall lifetime risk of developing can colorectal cancer is 1 in 23 in male and 1 in 26 in females if the incidence can decrease depending upon the risk factor in patient with polyps there are 5 to 10% chances of developing carcinoma over a period of 5 to 10 years hence the prevention is better by doing colonoscopy and removal of polyps after 40 years of age treatment of crc has improved over last few decades drastically and to discuss about the crc we have our learned speakers and for inviting them we invite first dr arshad ekwal lodi as a chairperson he is assistant professor radiation oncology in sri arvindo medical college indore he did his mbbs kmc mangalore manipal university and md radiation oncology from sai ms indore sri arvindo institute he has got 11 publications as author and co-author across the national journals two oral presentation two poster and second prize for the poster presentation in national airway 2020 so dr ashar ekwal lodi i am honored to as a chair for and kindly introduce uh, dr ashit arora and uh, the other speaker so we will begin with dr ashit arora dr ashar ekwal lodi yeah. good evening sir Are good evening there? everyone okay. yes sir good evening everyone thank you so much sir for this opportunity of chairing a session of an interactive uh, session on colorectal carcinoma so uh, as we all know colorectal carcinoma prevalent uh, traditionally it was thought to be a disease of the west but with the recent uh, changes in the uh, uh, lifestyle and the dietary uh, fa factors which are contributing to the diseases which are <coughs> in in uh, india recently the uh, incidence has been on the rise and uh, it has uh, now become a concerning problem in the indian scenario as well and uh, with the recent advances uh, in surgery uh, and as well as radiation techniques it is now we can aim for a cure as well as go for a, a, a organ preservation a function preservation for the patient and uh, uh, we would have our uh, speakers Uh, Dr. Asit Arora, sir, from Max Saket, he is uh, uh, director of GI oncology surgery, uh, 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 GI and hepatobiliary oncology at Max Super Specialty Hospital, Saket. His area expertise is minimal invasive oncosurgery, laparoscopic and robotic, uh, and uh, uh, CRS and HIPAC for peritoneal surface malignancy. He specializes in these fields, and he'll. uh he'll have a session on the recent advances the surgical advances in the field of colorectal carcinoma over to you sir and i invite uh, dr asit arora sir 
Thank you, everyone. I mean, thank you, uh, all of you. Um, it's really good to uh, meet you face to face. Uh, I think I'm meeting most of you for the first time. Uh, We've never had interaction primarily because I'm from a different ecosystem as you guys are. I'm basically a GI surgeon. I'm a trained GI surgeon. I did my MCH in GI surgery. And then I moved to oncology. So I'm basically a GI oncosurgeon, which is usually a very uh, unusual path to oncology. So that is the reason why probably many of you don't know me or we haven't interacted. So uh, basically uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to uh, make a presentation on colorectal cancer and the uh, the, the surgical aspect of stage four colorectal cancer. Now we all know for all solid organ cancers, surgery is the standard of care. There is no doubts and no debates there. We all know whether surgery alone is sufficient. We also know that surgery alone is sufficient only in very early cancers. When cancer is more than stage two, we usually require multimodality therapy. We need chemotherapy either before surgery or after surgery. We need radiation in majority of rectal cancers nowadays. So there is hardly any doubt about it. Most of the consensus is reached there. The issue is about stage four colorectal cancer. And I would like to take this opportunity to, on with the help of two cases, to tell you how the paradigms have changed recently in management of metastatic colorectal cancer. And uh, so I hope my screen is visible to you. This is uh, what has already been discussed, that it is a third most common cancer in the world, second most leading cause of death. But what we know also is that 25% of CRC are metastatic at present and almost 25% of them will develop metastasis during the course of the So it is the metastatic disease which kills a patient of CRC. And if you can deal with it well, you have the potential to prolong the survival of these patients. Now, most of these patients, if you look at the site of metastasis at the death, it's primarily liver, and second is abdominal. So when we say abdominal, it is basically the peritoneal surfaces where these metastases are. So we'll deal with these two things because as a GI oncosurgeon, this is what I manage and what I'm going to discuss with, right? If you look at the incidence world over, it is decreasing and so is the mortality. But unfortunately, that is not the case in India. Incidence of colorectal cancer in India sadly has been increasing at alarming rate. And like my previous speaker and the, the moderator of the sessions just stated that it is because of our lifestyle. So if you talk about colorectal liver metastasis, if you left a colorectal liver metastasis untreated, the median survival is somewhere around six to nine months. With chemotherapy, survival is around 13 to 18 months. Now, this has recently changed with the advent of newer chemotherapeutic agents and now immunotherapy can achieve survival in selected cases in up to almost uh, median survival has increased from 18 months to almost 26 to 30 months. But if you look at hepatectomy, if patients in which you can do hepatectomy, median survival is well over 40 months and five-year survival is attained in 17% of the patients. So when you can do surgeries for colorectal liver metastasis, it is still the best treatment option. Now, this is a difference you can achieve between a patient who has been resected and who has not been resected, okay? So how do we basically choose a patient for liver resection? You cannot operate everybody. And even in the tertiary care center like ours, where we do more than, you know, 70 to 80 liver resections for colorectal cancers every year, even the best of the centers, the resectability rate is pretty dismal. So why is it so? Basically, how do we choose it is basically by 
whether the patient is fit or how fit is the patient, then how, what are the, the number of lesions are there? What are the size of the lesions? Whether the lesions are unilateral or bilateral? We have to ensure that we, we leave a good future liver remnant. We, we ensure a good inflow and a good outflow of the liver, good biliary drainage. And now we are more, we are more and more uh, you know, utilizing laparoscopic or robotic techniques for liver resections. So, um, right. So, how do we decide basically? It is decided by a DMG based tumor board. Unless everybody sits down on a table and discuss a case the way we do, if you can see this slide, we have two medical oncologists, rather three medical oncologists sitting. We have two surgeons here. We have a pathologist, we have a radiation oncologist, we have a radiologist to guide us, and then we take a call. And the motto is that in God we trust, but everyone else must bring the data. Unless you have the data to support what you are doing, you are not allowed to proceed. So we are not proceeding on whims and fancies. We are not proceeding on basis of what we feel. We, we proceed on the basis of what data tells us. Just a brief case and then to drive home the point and then we will go on to the next part. So a 46 year old male presented to us in 2017. He had a long history, but decided to go on alternative treatment. But when he presented to us, he had a growth in, sec, uh, in the rectum, which is in the rectosigmoid rather, and a solitary liver metastasis. Uh, I think this is a video which I would rather skip. This is a video of laparoscopic right hemicolectomy because this is since this is not a uh, the the surgical audience, so I will skip the video. Uh, this is a a very short clip of how we do a laparoscopic liver resection. So this was not actually a liver resection; it was just a metastatectomy. So you can you know mark the lesion using your harmonic or or a cautery or a cusa, and once. Morbidity. So see, this, this is the post-resection area where we have already resected the lesion, right? So this patient underwent a simultaneous resection of the rectal primary, upper rectal primary rather, and the solitary met in the liver because it was a uh, the oligometastatic disease. Final biopsy was T3N0M1, 18 nodes, which are all negative, margins were all negative. Following this, patient went on to pseudo-adjuvant uh, treatment with KPOX. And when he completed it, this was the final picture of his CT in January 18, right? There were two new lesions in 18 after a year, close to a year after his first resection, which underwent radiofrequency ablation. Now, uh, he underwent radiofrequency ablation in March, July, and August. Unfortunately, in December 2018, when we saw there was one lesion which was progressing. Since patient has progressed, he had a very little disease-free survival. He had a very little disease-free survival. We decided not to operate him upfront and we decided to put him on systemic chemotherapy with the uh, uh, fall free and bevacizumab, which he took for six months. Unfortunately, despite these chemotherapeutic regimens, his disease progressed. Now, this is again an MRI, which is, which is showing you a large lesion, which is primarily in the left lobe, sorry, right lobe, in the segment 8, 4, 2, and 3, and infiltrating left portal vein. Now, rest of the lesions were all dead, and this was the only lesion that was there. So we decided to do a modified extended left hepatectomy for him. Now, this is, if you see these pictures, this is what we have done. This is the, uh, the rep post le remnant liver, and this is the excised specimen. Now, uh, you would have noticed that this patient had multiple therapies at multiple time points, which were deemed suitable at that given point of time. So he had surgery first, then he had radiofrequency adjuvant chemo, then radiofrequency ablation, then again chemotherapy with, uh, you know, uh, with targeted agents, and then he progressed, then surgery again. 
So basically, colorectal liver metastasis is something which allows you to administer different treatment modalities and different point of times and yet come out victorious at times. So this is a September 2019 picture which shows a, comp a liver which has grown very well and a liver which is recurrence free. And in January 23, that was his last follow up with us. He is doing well, his CA is normal, and there is absolutely no recurrence. So, 2014 to 20, uh, 2017 to 23, we have already achieved five years survival in this patient by administering multiple uh, modalities of cancer care, including two surgeries, targeted therapies, and chemotherapies. And by combination of everything, we could achieve a five year, good five year survival in a uh, metastatic stage for uh, colorectal cancer. So this was a case just to, you know, right to just to highlight that how a combination therapy can help these patients. So the treatment of colorectal liver metastasis liver is almost uh, now a standard of care in all the centers like ours. But the treatment of just excuse me one if you can. Please so, unmute uh, the other person. The please unmute. Treatment of uh, peritoneal liver metastasis is still not a standard of care in majority of centers. Most centers are very apprehensive of taking up these cases for surgical therapies. Now, uh, we do a lot of cytoreductive surgeries and HIPEG. Uh, I mean, uh, I can say this with a lot of pride that we are one of the highest volume center which performs cytoreductive surgery and HIPEGs, not only for uh, GI malignancies, but also for gynecological malignancies, for ovarian cancers, for colorectal cancers, for appendiceal tumors, and very highly selected cases of even gastric cancers, right? So, Peritoneal metastasis in colorectal cancers is uniformly fatal if not treated well. But when selected properly, a cytoreductive surgery and HIPEG can give very good median survival in these patients. So how do we choose what is CRS? It's obviously to remove all the tumor from the peritoneal cavity from all the quadrants, including the uh, mesentery of the bowel and where, wherever it is. And to achieve this, this is called how to achieve a CC0. That is, no disease which is visible to naked eye is left inside the peritoneal cavity. That is the aim of the surgery. And so just uh, to give you an uh, idea, pictorial uh, idea of how we do it. So this is a case of appendiceal tumor which had a peritoneal spread. So what you see in these pictures is the pelvic peritoneum and the pouch of Douglas, which is completely smeared by the, the tumor cells here. And uh, this is uh, the, the, the quadrant on the left side and the right side, which is again uh, studded with deposits. This is the liver, the glycens capsule, if you see, it is completely smeared by the mucinous material. And the diaphragm, on the left picture shows diaphragm, which is, uh, again, there is disease there. Now, this is how it looks like in the post-operative period. This is the pelvic peritonectomy along with the right ovarian cyst and hysterectomy that has been done. On the right side, you see the peritonectomy of the right quadrant being achieved. Now, the picture on the left shows how a glycinectomy is done. A picture on the right is showing you how we do a, a stripping of the diaphragms. And this is a final picture. You see the pelvic peritoneum, which has been cleaned of all the disease along with the, uh, along with the entire peritoneum over the bladder and the uterus and over the rectum. And uh, the left down picture shows a stripped uh, out diaphragm along with a liver, which has been completely stripped of his glycens capsule. And this is the central tendon and the diaphragm on the left side. And this is how, at the end, the abdomen looks like. This is a CC0 abdomen where you have removed every single bit of tumor and achieved a cytoreduction zero. Uh, so this is what is the aim of a cytoreductive surgery. And once you have done this, then you put hyperthermic chemotherapy 
inside the peritoneal cavity. This is another technique. This is called extra peritoneal uh, cytoreduction in which we go into the extra peritoneal approach and then end result will be the same. And then we give hyperthermic chemotherapy. In case of colorectal cancers, we are using mitomycin C and it is delivered at 43 degrees inside the peritoneal cavity. And we, we run this fluid for about 90 minutes and then we achieve a high peg. So this is, there are two, three techniques of doing it. The left one is called open technique. The right one is called the semi-closed technique. And what you see here is called the closed technique of doing a high peg. Another technique that we use nowadays is called PIPEC. What you see here, it is a pressurized intraperitoneal chemotherapy. The machine that you see is a pressure injector by which we give aerosolized chemotherapy inside the peritoneal cavity. We have special uh, cannulas which we use. These are called the air seal cannulas and which by using this, we can deliver a PIPEC. Now, obviously, we have to be very careful when we are selecting patients for these aggressive surgeries because these surgeries are like not something which is a, a mean feat. A, a proper cytoreductive surgery can take anywhere in upwards of 10 to 12 hours. Patient has to be aggressive, uh, extremely fit to withstand such kind of surgeries. Patient has to be, uh, you know, the biology of disease is such that, you know, it is a well-differentiated tumor. Uh, most of the time, these are the patients in which we give neoadjuvant chemotherapy to select out good biology. A patient who has responded well to this neoadjuvant therapy would be subjected to CRS and HIPEG. So this is how we select these patients. So the take-home message from my presentation would be that colorectal cancer is one of the great success stories in oncology. Surgeon, is ha surgeon do have a role to play even in metastatic disease, but the caveat is that every case has to be discussed with an MDT team, which comprises not only of a surgeon, but also of a medical oncologist, a radiation oncologist, a pathologist, and radiologist. And when you select your patients well, you most of the time give good advantage to them, pass on this advantage to them. And I would like to take this opportunity to invite you all for the Max Cancer Congress which we are holding on 29th and 30th of the April. Uh, this is going to be a very deep dive in oncology from you know head to toe. Uh, we have sessions lined up for every disease management group, not only GI, but thoracic, breast, gynae, neuro, everything is included in this. And we have a very special session for the oncologist, both all surgical, medical, and radiation, who are practicing in small tier two and tier three cities outside of the metros. So we have, you know, named this session as Udgam, which would be you know, cancer care in tier one and two and three cities. And uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. And thank you for inviting me for such a wonderful session. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you, Dr. 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 It was really nice to hear about um, colorectal surgery, advanced cases, such a good survival. You said um, you are using high pack and pipe pack. So it's giving quite a good result, but I don't know how much it is costing at your center. Sir, cost of HIPEG in my center is uh, somewhere around uh, 7.5 to 8 lakhs. That includes the cost of the uh, the accessories or the 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 disposable for HIPEGs that are used and uh, ICU stay of around two days and total hospital stay of about 10 days. So that is something that usually uh, cost us in our center. No, it's very nice to see your presentation because uh, in spite of every uh, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and then uh, uh, surgical, then after in 2018, and after that, we had uh, recurrence in the liver. Then radiofrequency ablation of the lesion. Thereafter, again, uh, you developed uh, some secondaries in liver, you excise, then did IPEC and all. So it's really a very nice word. What about the survival after high pack? So, sir, like I said, uh, 
so we have to select our patients very well. Uh, you know, sir, oncology yeah. mein, jab hum pad rahe the na, to hamare boss bolte the, tab wo border movie aayi thi, to uska dialogue tha, hami ham hai, to kya ham hai, aur tumi tum ho, to kya tum ho. To oncology mein akela surgeon so, kuch nahi kar sakta, akela medical oncologist kuch nahi kar sakta, akela radiation oncologist kuch nahi kar sakta. Jab hum tino saath milke chalte hain, to we can do wonders. And that is what the essence of oncology is. This is what the ethos of oncology practice is. That a surgeon alone can never achieve anything in isolation. This is what I have learned in my practice. And this is what the principle of our DMG practice is. Right. So we have to select out a case in which we can pass on the benefit directly to the patient. Now, if I do a surgery, which is 10 to 12 hour long surgery, and it's a mutilating surgery, most of the times when we do hyperx, patient will end up yeah. having multivisceral resections. We have to take out uterus and bilateral ovaries in all cases because POD is always involved. Most of the cases will require splenectomy. Many cases will re require uh, partial gastrectomies or uh, colectomies. Only if we select the patient well, if we have good biology, which has been selected out by giving anterior chemotherapy about five to six cycles, which, when your histology is good, you have well differentiated tumors. When you check out the good PCI, the disease volume, a very high disease volume, if we do CRS hypeg, it will come back sooner than later. So you have to select out a disease volume, which is not very high, not very low. So a PCI of somewhere around 14 to 16 is what we aim at. Anything more than that, we usually don't do HIPEG. PCI of less than 10, most of the patients don't require HIPEG. Only CRS is sufficient for them. So if you select your good patients out, I have patients who have survived even five years after CRS and HIPEG also. We have achieved cure in patients with peritoneal metastasis, in colorectal cancers, in appendiceal cancers. Though our results in stomach cancers are pretty dismal, we do not offer a CRS and HIPEC to majority of stomach cancers who have peritoneal metastasis, but only to very, very selected patients who have a very low volume of disease. So if you do a staging laparoscopy and you find that there is some disease on the diaphragm, limited on the left side or onto the lesser sac, Probably this patient after getting flawed for about four cycles or six cycles and he says disease is absolutely stable, then possibly we will go in. Otherwise not. Okay. So uh, is the combination of surgeon, medical oncologist and radiation oncologist, it will bring the changes in the result. And uh, tumor board is a must. We must sit down and discuss about the disease and decide. It is not that what I can do the best. It is the how we can do the best for the patient. This is the, uh, uh, this should be the concept and this should be the aim of treating the cancer patients. Thank you very much. Any other question from the audience? Mr. Barun? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, can you unmute all so that they can ask question? Yes, sir. Sir, they can unmute themselves, sir. Okay, okay, okay. There are no so questions. There are no questions. Then we can proceed. Yes, Dr. Ashar Iqbal. Yes, sir. Thank Dr. you, Ashar. Dr. Ashar, sir, uh, for this wonderful session, for this enlightening session. Now, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Paragi Goyal, uh, is a, a third-year resident uh, in the Department of Radiation Oncology at Sri Aurobindo uh, Medical College, Indore. Uh, so she'll be presenting, uh, she'll be speaking on the role of uh, radiotherapy in the management of colorectal uh, cancer. Over to you, Dr. Pragi.
good evening everybody and thank you sir for giving me this opportunity to speak over here and as the, uh, as uh, sir said about the surgery uh, modality uh, as we all know that in colorectal carcinoma surgical uh, the main uh, line of treatment is surgery surgically removing the cancer is the one of the most uh, mainstay uh, treatment in ma many stages of the colorectal ca cancers but chemotherapy radiation therapy targeted therapy radio frequency ablation and uh, cryo surgery are other uh, treatment also that can be uh, that are used in colorectal cancers but why should we use radiation or in four colon cancers or how do we use the first thing is a uh, new adjuvant chemotherapy we do uh, that is we use new adjuvant radiation therapy before the surgery to shrink the tumor or to preserve the sphincter muscles and it to treat the lymph nodes near the tumor other way is intraoperative radiation therapy during which is done during the surgery right to the area where the tumor is or to kill the cancer cells which are present near the uh, tumor and uh, the third is adjuvant radiotherapy that is after the surgery when there the r0 margin is not achieved or the uh, the reduction and the reoccurrence is the chances of reoccurrence is more fourth is definitive radiotherapy where the unresected resectable or medically inoperable disease or the patient is not ready for the surgery So if this palliative radiotherapy, it is for it is to ease the symptoms if advanced uh, advanced rectal, rectal cancer, which is causing intestinal blockage, bleeding, or pain. It can also be used to reduce the symptoms of uh, if there is any brain or bony metastasis. Next is ablative radiotherapy. As I said, they are the most common site for metastasis in colorectal carcinoma is liver. or uh, the second most common is lung when where oligometastasis occurs we can use ablative radiotherapy uh, that is radio surgery so how new adjuvant radiotherapy is chemo radiation therapy this is uh, considered for locally advanced cancers or unresectable ca uh, colon cancers it uh, as it as a less hypoxic tumor bed is presented which improves the therapeutic ratio and this also uh, helps in matlab the tumor decrease the spillage of tumor during the surgery it uh, decreases the small bowel toxicities and new adjuvant therapy also provide the opportunity for downstaging the disease and it may facilitate the sphincter preservation there was a trial foxtroid pilot study which showed that new adjuvant chemotherapy for last t3 or t4 tumors is uh, feasible with acceptable to toxicities the agents we use in radiation uh, along with radiation in new adjuvant therapy are 5fu so capacitabin oxaliplatin uh, ironotic and gemcitabine bevacizumab cetuximab and metamycin c see uh, they are the before when the patient was given chemo radiation before the surgery the tumor shrinked in 3 weeks and uh, the surgery was possible after that this is how the uh, pre radiation uh, if the radiation or chemotherapy is given before yeah. the surgery the uh, there is chances of preservation of sphincter also based on the location of the most of the size the uh, for the relapse after the surgery the radiation field decreases the uh, area to be uh, to be resected the benefits of pre operative pre chemo radiation for rectal cancers or colorectal is avoid is avoiding the permanent colostomy in the series where patient were expected to require a colostomy after the pre op therapy the number who were able to avoid a permanent colostomy were increased tremendously from 39 to 94 uh, the typical course of new adjuvant radiotherapy is daily radiation 5 days a week for 28 uh, for 28 treatments treatment generally took 10 minutes and it was the combination of 5fu was given to the patients the type of radiation therapy we used is external beam radio therapy uh, it can be 3d crt imrt preferably or sbrt internal radiation therapy is also done but uh, not to much extent these days and uh, few uh, in red uh, liver metastasis we do radio embolization internal radiation therapy that is brachytherapy it involves the application of higher dose of radiation to treat a smaller area of the tumor in lesser time as compared to ebrt and brachytherapy rarely is involved employed to treat some rectal cancers because limited information is available in brachytherapy radioactive seeds are used which are placed inside the rectum or the colon next to the tumor there is one thing that is endocavitary radiation therapy which involves a small balloon 
like device which is positioned through the anus and into the rectum to supply high intensity radiation for a few minutes and then relief patients are award major uh, yeah. major surgery yeah. and yeah. this is carried out in four or lesser treatment with the gap of two weeks between each treatment yeah. this tissue free therapy uses a small pellet of radio uh, radioactive material in a tube it is exactly like endo endocavity yeah. bigger therapy Intraoperative radiotherapy permits application of radiation to the target area only and leave normal surrounding areas unaffected. And it is accepted for the uh, from for the treatment of cancers that are difficult to remove during the surgery. When it is probability that a small amount of cancer will remain after the therapy, we prefer intraoperative radiation Baby. therapy. As compared Baby. to conventional. As compared to uh, conventional radiation therapy, a higher dose of radiation is used in internal uh, intraoperative radiation therapy. I will cut it short to like uh, when around 900 patients were treated with uh, intraoperative EBRT, 1959 patients with a high ra uh, density radiation, usually following preoperative combined modality treatment with uh, external pre uh, radiotherapy. Which was given 45 to 50 oh along with chemo, chemo of five effusive cisplatin. Most patients had clinical stage of four, T4 and T3 lesion. And the patient uh, we are Pony Pine Bajay or Pony Pine Bajay. Serotactic radiation, uh, radio surgery and radio therapy. Just taking me to Mumbai Milanica so, insurance. And, uh, up the Sivni is a doctor, a gin common. Please mute everyone. Directed high dose irradiation that uh, tightly confirm uh, to an intracranial and extracranial target to create a desired radiobiological uh, response while minimizing the radiation dose to surrounding normal tissues. And this technique exploits the fact that the radiation tolerance of normal tissue is volume dependent. Compared to the conventional radiotherapy, we uh, with standard one to two centimeter target margin, the allowing for the patient's movement. Only. And set of error, stereotactic technique used from complication risk for a radiation dose delivered by minimizing or eliminating normal non tissue starting away. time. You don't know, they can use bada bada the radiation is used when all the radiation is done in one to five se sessions or fractions. And SRT is approximately when six or more radiation fractions are administered. SRT is also used. Is a non invasive or effective means of eradicating a decreased uh, tumor in the setting of oligometastatic disease. So, we use lesions for, uh, which occur in liver and lung. These are the different modalities which we use in radio surgery for cancers like tumor therapy, cyber knife, and common. When there is an oligometastasis in liver, radio surgery or ablative surgery is used. We can call it as ablative radiation also. Uh, the other thing which is activated radiotherapy. Adjuvant radiotherapy, uh, radiation therapy is generally recommended when there is uh, initially unresectable uh, tumor or which can be because of the uh, advanced stage or because of the anatomically uh, anatomical origin of the uh, of the uh, tumor that is if the tumor is around ascending or descending colon uh, which is anatomically immobile the close proximity of the retroperitoneal lesion so the surgery is little difficult when it is in ascending or descending colon to minimize or to decrease the tumor size we do adjuvant radiotherapy when there is uh, when so it is not possible. The, uh, this is a trial done and the results were uh, good when the surgery was done and after the surgery post-radiation, post-surgery radiotherapy was done. Now, uh, how radiation is given for the can be treated in a frozen position with full bladder because it decreases the toxicities to the small bowel and the bladder. It is done in a belly border. Mr. Varun, kindly mute all. A marker is placed at anal, vaginal, or rectal, or perineal skin uh, to alienate or to see the tissue, normal tissues correctly. And the target volume is primary tumor or tumor bed with the margins, presacral space, perineum, distal common iliac or internal iliac nodes, 
if T4 stage is, uh, if the tumor is in a T4 stage, then external iliac nodes are also included. Uh, we generally do 3D uh, IMRT technique, we prefer IMRT technique over 3D CRT, and there are multiple fields used in IMRT. The field arrangement is like the posterior anterior, the lateral border is 1.5 centimeter lateral to the widest bony margin to the true pelvic uh, wall. And the still border is three centimeter below the primary tumor or at the inferior aspect of the obturator foramen, uh, whichever is the most inferior. And the superior border is L5 and S1 junction. Uh, of this, uh, the lateral border of it is in the posterior border is one to 1.5 centimeter behind the anterior bony sacral. Imagine an anterior border is teeth in the teeth, teeth in the pubis to treat only the internal lens. For T4 disease, anterior margin of the uh, symphysis pubis to include the external iliac nodes. The, no, the dose which is delivered in a uh, pre-operative radiotherapy, that is neoadjuvant radiation therapy. Uh, if we are doing short course, that is 25 gray in 5 fraction. In 5 gray is given in 1 week. And the long course, that is if, uh, if it is in phase 1, the, the recommended dose is 50.4 gray in 25 fractions. It's 1.8 gray in 5 weeks. And if it is in sec second phase, then 5.4, that is boost. 5.4 to 9 gray in 3 to 5 fractions. If we are uh, doing adjuvant radiation therapy, then, then 45 gray in 25 uh, fractions. And boost of 5.4 to 9 gray in 3 to 5 gray, uh, five fractions. Uh, in palliative RT, uh, in phase 1, 45 gray in 25 fractions delivered and in uh, boost 5.4 to 14.4 gray in 3 to 8 fractions are delivered. And if we are going with hypofractionated regimen, then 30 to 36 gray in 5 to 6 gray is delivered. There are certain uh, side effects of radiation therapy also like skin irritation, bilayed wound really healing, if the surgery is done, nausea, uh, sexual irritation, bobble incontinence, bladder irritation, fatigue, uh, and uh, scarring and fibrosis. There was a trial that is... According to this trial, if short, uh, uh, short duration uh, radiation is given, like five gray in five fraction, uh, plus surgery versus surgery alone, then there was uh, their overall survival uh, was increased to uh, from 30 to 38 percent and local reoccurrence decreased from 26 percent to 9 percent. In Dutch trial, it was 11 decreased to from 11 percent to 5 uh, 5 percent and overall survival uh, was a little less from 49 percent to 48 percent. The palliating uh, pelvic uh, in the pel uh, pelvic relapse, the uh, pain generally uh, the symptoms which reduces is the pain and it reduces from sixty four to eighty five percent, and uh, bleeding completely stops and pain reduces to sixty five percent. There was a uh, trial, German French. Uh, uh, trial in which uh, the local re uh, in the local reoccurrence the uh, local reoccurrence decreases from 10 percent to 7 percent and overall survival was almost similar to the uh, before uh, before well, uh, giving the surgery doing the surgery only in this trial german trial uh, the patient were caught In the German trial of pre-op and post-op chemoradiation, the overall survival was more in pre-op uh, where the patients were given the radiation in uh, before the surgery and, and the local relapse was less, that is 6%, and complications were less, uh, that was 27% when radiation and chemotherapy was, were given before the surgery.
so is there any problem you can stop if if it's not moving i will summarize it in one slide the uh, last yeah, yeah that will be better There is some error in the uh, slide show. That is the last last uh, slide, uh, anyways. Interesting. And we have discussion. Yes, ma'am. Okay, over to you, Doctor Chaturvedi. So I'll speak on his behalf. Up mute, kalu upar se. Up mute, kalu So the question, what we were discussing, both of us was uh, more on preventive oncology so what 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 is your take <clears throat> like uh, what should the like we have even uh, non oncology doctors with us so when should, what should be done to prevent colon cancer when it is when the probability is so much 1 in 25 or so so what should be done on the preventive aspect. What, what is the guidance? Yes, yes I this is actually, this is actually Western data. And in India, the incidence is quite low. But where we suspect intestinal polyposis or just exactly. like that, we should go for colonoscopy. After the age of 40 or 58. And if you find any polyp, that should be removed because there are chances of 5 to 10% uh, conversion into malignancy. Am I audible? I don't think. Dr. Asher? Yes, sir. Uh, sure. okay. Okay. Uh, there is so there are chances of developing malignancy in those polyps that they should be found out and removed as early as possible. That is the preventive aspect. Moreover, if, uh, Dr. Ashit, are you there? Dr. Very Ashit? Much, very much. I'm here. Yes. Okay, fine. Uh, there was one question whether the aspirin, taking oral aspirin or uh, these uh, Rudogo statins and statins, other statins, whether they are having protective effect or they are increasing cancer. So there is some definite data about uh, low dose ecosprin 75 mg when you take it. It has a protective effect on uh, right. colorectal cancer. I mean, the right. question that you asked prior to that was, uh, as a society and as an individual, what you can do to, you know, prevent having a colorectal cancer. Uh, so basically, if you look at most of the cancers, almost 50% of the cancers worldwide are preventable. Another 20% are possibly screenable, right? So preventable, when we say it is preventable, that means it is either related to your habits, related to your obesity, related to your viral infections or bacterial infections or exposure to the, uh, to the industrial pollutants or whatever. So, uh, so that is something you can do on personal level. And then like uh, screening protocols, we already have established screening protocols for five cancers now though in India there is no written guidelines or as such, but then uh, now for colorectal cancer, if you look at the 
American uh, Gastroenterology Society guidelines, they say any person who is uh, more than 50 years, normal healthy patient who does not have any higher risks, a normal person who is the age group of 50 or above should get a screening colonoscopy done once in 10 years. So this is the screening protocol for uh, everybody as advised by American Society of Gastroenterology. So we don't have any uh, guidelines from Indian societies, uh, neither from the gastroenterology side nor from the oncology side. But like in most of the cancers, we adopt guidelines from either US and Europe and implement. So this is one that is there for colorectal cancer. Second most important thing is as a preventive aspect. So obesity is one of the major risk factor for colorectal cancer. So obesity and obviously lack of physical activity. This is probably has been, uh, you know, the reason why colorectal cancer incidence is increasing in India, wherever it is increasing world over. In India, colorectal cancer have increased very significantly in past couple of years. And the exact reason is that our lifestyle is becoming more and more Western as we are, you know, uh, making uh, financial inroads. So we are yeah. less active, we are eating more junk food, we are eating more processed food and we are eating more and more uh, non-vegetarian food. So these are the things I think we should do. And uh... Very, nice. Very rightly said. Dr. A.P. Gupta, you want to add something? Yes. You want to ask something? Our yes. experts are there. <clears throat> Dr. A.P. Gupta is a surgeon of Gorakhpur. Dr. Ravi Gupta, can you come in? President of IEM Society. We had a nice talk and a nice eye opener on so many aspects of the oncology, colorectal cancers. I would like to add here something, ma'am. Uh, yes. As you are discussing about uh, uh, the preventive oncology, the preventive aspects, as uh, Asits are already told that. Uh, our uh, lifestyle has gone more Western. So we need to uh, educate the general public regarding the consumption of the red meat. It, it should be limited. And as we as uh, uh, it is, especially in the urban area, the, there has been increased uh, use of additives and preservatives and art artificial uh, agents in the, uh, in the food, as well as the diet becoming uh, more of processed food and less less dietary uh, containing less dietary this fibers. This is absolutely no. true, as Doctor uh, Asit Arora has already mentioned. Lifestyle modification. This is for all cancers and all chronic disabilities, which are growing uh, in higher incidences in India. So we have to take care of that. Obesity, exercise, good nutrition, good hygiene. All that includes viral infections, bacterial infections, the cause mutations, conditions, all these things come under preventive oncology and we have to do screening and vaccination along with that where vaccination is available like for cervical cancers and for this of course we don't have but we have to be on alert and create awakening among people that you have to get screened for colon cancer once in 10 years after 40 or 50 doctor I think so after 50 and those at risk Lynch syndrome right. familial they have to get it done so, so uh, for normal public journal public it is more than 50 and if you are in a high risk category for example you have uh, more than one uh, more than two first degree relatives who have been diagnosed with cancer, then you are possibly in a Lynch family. If you are a, you are a carrier 
then you have to undergo screening at the age before the youngest person who got the cancer in your family. So if that age was 30, then your screening should start before 30. If somebody got it at 24, you should get it starting at 24. And if you are a case of FAB, then the screening starts much earlier. In FAB, it starts even in, uh, you know, before 20 years. And in those patients, you don't just put them on screening. You, you do a prophylactic total proptocolectomy with ileal pouch, anal anastomosis for these patients. Similarly, if you, you yourself are a patient of colon cancer or rectal cancer, in that patient also a screening colonoscopy once a uh, one year after their surgery, index surgery, and then once after every five years is recommended for the rest of the life. Because colon cancer has a propensity to reoccur in the rest of the colon. So not reoccur, new lesions can develop. So, yeah. so then those patients are also advised to have screening colonoscopy later on. Very nicely said, and Dr. Paragi, you were also very good uh, at your level, third year resident, just two, three men, so much experience in this high tech and pipe tech. Such a superior uh, part of the surgery, and uh, it is a great extension, which all the doctors should know. Earlier, we had this IPAC uh, also covered in ovarian cancer, cancers that also we had. And this should be brought to know. That is what I wanted. The oncology integrated means this. Like we should know every detail about both the aspects of the higher end cancer. Radiotherapy also and in surgical also. Dr. will say what extra Dr. Paragi has said about colorectal cancers. And Dr. Chaturvedi just had her explanations. Uh, unmute yourself. Otherwise, speak from my phone. You are muted. You have muted yourself. Radiotherapy mein kya Paragi ne bola hai? What uh, just you will give advice, take home message for all of us. Yeah, Dr. Paragi Goyal. He has spoken very well. I must congratulate her as well as the team. It was nice and preoperative radiotherapy that makes the surgery more easy. And surgeons have got And similarly, post op radiation is also good to minimize the metastasis or recurrence. That's very good. We must combine, depending upon the stage of uh, colonial cancer or colorectal cancer. Especially in rectal cancer, radiotherapy has got a very big role. So we must continue with that. So, this is all. Thank you very much. Over to you, Dr. Deepthi. We want to. Achha. So, thank you, Dr. Bandari and his team, Dr. Asha Rikwal. Very nice to have you on this board. And Dr. Ashit Arora, very nice presentation. Very good. Thank and you very much. Uh, thank you, sir. Really thank you. Uh, good joining you in Delhi. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you. I mean, it was wonderful meeting you guys. And Ashar, uh, I also, I'm a uh, KMC Mangalore pass out. I was there in 2000, uh, 1998. So okay. I'm, I'm sure you are my junior from there. So, I mean, it's lovely ca catching up with you. And uh, uh, I would like to I take this opportunity it. again to invite you all for Max Concert Con Max Cancer Congress, which we are hosting from 29th and 30th of April. So you guys are most welcome. Please do come. It's going to be a fun-filled and education-filled two days, and we ensure you a good hospitality. Yes, thank you, Dr. Thank you. 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 Th
I was just searching you. You were not on the. No, I joined just now. <laughs> I am away out of the out of station. Uh, oh, just oh, joined. Yeah. I have not heard the <laughs> talk of Paragi, but I know what I she has talked, and probably she might have talked about radiotherapy in toto, including pre-op, near yes, yes. stop, setting everything. She might have talked about. Uh -huh. And uh, thank you very much for a nice thing. Uh, Happy summarize, take home message of radiotherapy. Because sprinkle uh, saving mainly is most important thing in uh, anorectal mm -hmm. and colorectal cancer, and radiotherapy has helped a lot in that. And that's the only mm -hmm. thing what is there. Mm -hmm. yeah, because yes. I have been family here, and for our people, but Chogi. हां बच्चों की आवाजें आ रही हैं बहुत सारी हां <laughs> तो बढ़िया है मैं बोल पाऊंगा बट थैंक यू ऑल फॉर ऑल द थिंग्स एंड योर नाइस व्हाट यू हैव ऑर्गेनाइज एंड यू आर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग एसजीपीटी वाले एक ही दिखाई नहीं दिए इसमें हां तो मैं आ गया ना इसीलिए आखिरी में हां ठीक है डॉक्टर मधु गुलाटी शी इज देयर और नॉट Dr. Madhu? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, you can talk to your friend. Uh, I think he's uh, yeah. your best friend or what? Asit. Asit is a good friend. And uh, okay. hoti rehti, he operated on Dr. Achha. Raji. <laughs> so I know him very well. Achha, achha. <laughs> Hello, oh, madam. Well, so, uh, good to, so good to hear from you. <laughs> How are you? We are waiting for you to come to GKP. Madam, and uh, soon, ke, soon, soon, very soon. Hospitality. Aap ek bari GKP aoge na, so you'll see. Hum log ki hospitality yahan ki. Madam, wo to already dekho. Dono chize final ho chuki hai. Ayush ke saath golf khelni hai aur sir ke saath wo McAllen 25 hai. To wo to already sorted hai. Acha acha. Okay. Done done. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank Dr. Gulati, for joining. <laughs> Very nice, Deepti. Ye jo tumne shuru kiya hai. Unfortunately, for the last four five months, I was hardly in town, and I couldn't uh, attend. Thank you so much. Plus, I thought that we should know from different angles. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, all the doctors should join and know. Hi, Owen. Hello, Doctor Owen Shrasta. How are you? Ah, good. <laughs> Dr. Rajesh, the video is on.